like that's how I feel like that's how I look every time. Uh, Beauty standards are different for men and women. Oh, totally. Oh, it's insane how different they are. I mean, look at the Pam and Pam and Tommy thing that's coming out now. You know, <laughs> he was a sex god, and it ruined her career. You know? Right. I mean, that's not beauty. That's just you know, but same same general principle. Uh, welcome to the long shot, folks. <laughs> is that it is. The show? <laughs> I hope so. I really. Uh, people can just be like, "What the <laughs> fuck are you listening?" To? Okay, I guess this is the show. Uh, welcome to the long shot. It is a podcast. I am one of the hosts. My name is Sean Connery. With me today on the podcast, the other host. Her name is Amber Kenny. Hello. How are How you? How are you? I'm good. Jinx. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <you> go. <laughs> Jinx. Okay. So how did Jinx work when you were growing up? Like, I know you just said Jinx, buy me a Coke. Uh-huh. Did you ever have to actually buy anybody a Coke? No, I don't think so. Was that I... the standard protocol? Was that you said Jinx? Or it was me? like, owe me a Coke. But I don't think anyone ever was good for it. Because when I, was, I when I was a kid, it was like jinx, no service. You. There was a punching element, but there was also you couldn't speak. Right. That was that was it. Until yes. somebody else said your name. Yes. Uh, so that was I, 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 you know, I didn't speak from the time I was seven until. You know. Well, because you were on the w- same wavelength. As so right. many people. Well, I said, no, no, no. It was one time and nobody would say my name. <laughs> and I knew I wasn't allowed to speak. Right. Uh, I'm sure there are people who wish that was true. Uh, so we always start the show with a segment that we like to call checking in. It's just, uh, it's just like when you are going into a, a hospital in the emergency room and they ask you for your insurance coverage and, you know, you have to fill out all kinds of forms and say, you know, have, have you had any allergies? Have you had any, right. you know, all that? It's a similar it's a similar thing. Yeah, it's similar. I would mm. hope it's slightly less tedious. But valid, valid. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I hope, but you know, I don't know. It's <laughs> entirely possible that it's not me. It's, it's similar really in that know. way as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Why don't we start today with you, Amber, checking in? What's going on? Yes. Fascinating stuff. I just want to do a mini TV update. I have Great. two mini updates. Oh, right. Your TV. You got a giant TV. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me catch up the listeners. You got a giant TV. And I Five minutes later, it was broken. <laughs> then I was sad. <laughs> Jeff was dealing with it, and he was like, this is going to be a nightmare. Yes. And then it was so easy. Yes. Supposedly, but we didn't know yes. for sure. Yes. That they were going to come and pick it up and take it back and bring back a new one. So what's the latest? So... TV update, they someone came and picked up the old the the box, the shoe box the with new the old TV. Old one, right. it, it's still the broken new one. Correct. That is mm-hmm. a clearer way of stating right. it. Um on Tuesday, and then just this morning, we got the delivery of the new new one. And unbroken. I, unbroken. And I haven't even watched it yet um i've been a little bit busy at work and jeff is still setting it up but here's the thing that i have mixed feelings on i just learned this information right before this call we've been a roku family for a decade love love roku (laughs) i mean we love like the roku city as the sort of screensaver i guess is what you would call it i guess yeah i see i'm i'm new to roku and i by new i mean within the last year so i am not as familiar with the terminology and i never thought about it but you're right there is kind of a city in the background as the screensaver definitely a city and it's Mm -hmm. roku city my friend you could change the theme of the city like it could be i'm not aware of any of this yeah Uh, it's so fun i mean it's not so fun but we were. Jeff, can we t- can we change? Can we play with the city again on Roku? You think you're being funny, but that I don't like ever it. think I'm being funny. Just so you know. <laughs> that's like a documentary mm-hmm. um, snippet of our life. I think you know 
going crazy and being inside for two years and just watching TV, you you find interesting ways to entertain yourself. Right. Right. <laughs> and and like Roku City is themed for the different holidays, and and Roku City has like um, Easter eggs that are referencing different movies, so you go through and try to guess what they are. Mm-hmm. And this is not even watching TV. This is See, watching. I feel like I don't have any of access to any of that. I, for, for some reason, mine is always the same. Although I did notice recently one time it was you different could go to themes. for something. Oh, so well, that's I'll walk you through it at some point. Okay. But all of that said. Let's have a, let's have a virtual Zoom Roku date yes. of oh. what goes on with this I thing. I hate all of those words. <laughs> <laughs> but um so we we had just like a little roku box Mm -hmm. and then the broken new tv was a roku tv so it was built in so we didn't need the box anymore right we had to go back to the box when we went back to the old tv anyway all of this said new tv this new new tv it's a google tv or something oh no no coup for roku <laughs> yes so like even just the remote i was like i don't know what, I, don't, I don't i don't know like i realized how much the remote has become second nature and yeah. it's be very strange to be like how do i find- this is kind of in line with something we were talking about recently where and I forget what it was, but it was something about your house where you were like, oh, we just have to do like you have to turn oh, it was the Roku. Roku. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's the same thing. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like I know exactly which remote I need to use right. to do what for my TV, but there are four remotes I have to juggle between to do right. any given thing. Right. And I I don't remember where or how I acquired that knowledge. I don't know if it was like sure. the Jedi or Academy how you could or possibly give that knowledge to anyone else because it's sort of right. Like and that's ingrained. where people get into yeah. trouble. Where it's like I go to somebody else's place and I'm like I'm fucked, and yeah. they're like, "What's it's, wrong with you?" You know. Right. So now you're in this situation where you're starting all over, brand new process, and you have to figure out how all this shit holds together. Right. And um because I'm doing this podcast, I'm pretty sure Jeff will be doing a lot of the setup. Like it will be done when I'm done with this, but still Mm. like the navigating it all. Right. It's just interesting. It's going to be a brave new world. Right. It seems like we should live in a world where this doesn't get worse and more complicated over time, but the opposite is true. Right, right, right. Like I should not need four remotes to work my TV on anything. Right. No, my phone should do everything Mm -hmm. my phone should be the tv remote and other stuff (laughs) no i'm on board yes absolutely (laughs) but then you lose your phone and you can't do anything right but if that was the case there would be a backup system in place like you would be like oh let me get out my other my other phone you know (laughs) whatever my burner phone Mm -hmm. um so that is that. The other mini update I wanted to give everyone in case they were worried. Mm. This was the week that I had jury duty. Oh, right. And I just had to call in. I I, I say that strangely because I never once called in. I logged into the website. Mm-hmm. But it's weird to say, like, I logged in every night. It, it doesn't feel like you, it's... You, you, you hacked into the Justice Department. Yeah. Website. Well, it, it doesn't oh, seem to, like give the same meaning. Like I have mm-hmm. to log in again at seven tomorrow. But anyway, mm-hmm. I just got notification via logging in or calling in or whatever mm-hmm. you want to say that my jury duty service is fulfilled. And, and I you never, never went, even, I never want it. Great. I mean, not great because I know you wanted to try it and see what it was like, but also no, right now possible scenario. Yeah. 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 Um, and I feel like that's true. Probably for most people like that's the nature of jury duty is that they call lots and lots of people because they know lots of people are going to end up not ending right. up right ending up you know right uh so it all worked out yeah everything's great i um kind of going back to the tv being broken and all mm. was lost and we were a hopeless sad family and then the next day it was like oh everything's fine it's all solved that has been sort of a theme 
in my life this, I mean, I guess always, but this week particularly heightened um, where I will end a work day and be like, this is an impossible amount of work. It's an impossible project. There's no way I could finish this. Mm -hmm. I need help. I'm drowning. I can't figure it out. I'm like almost in tears. And then in the morning I wake up and I'm like, and it's done. So it's like, I think I'm just a morning person. Mm. (laughs) Right. Well, it's also funny. I mean, you're, you're, you're saying, because the all is lost moment is a very Uh important moment in the hero's journey and lots of structure outlines or whatever, not anyone that I adhere to because I work in television. So it's not a start and finish Mm. thing. Uh, but I have had somebody bring that up on two different occasions recently in my sitcom writing class where I'm like, why is this thing in here? And they'll go, I just wanted to get to the all is lost moment. And I'm like, Oh no, this fucking idiot has been reading other stuff. You know, uh, you're just confusing yourself. Trust me. Like, it's like, you know, it's like trying to do, uh, 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 two things at once. I was trying to come up with a good analogy and I couldn't in the moment too bad. Aren't, Aren't there TV writers that use that philosophy? Am I in? Maybe. I I, I think they're idiots, but maybe there are. I don't know. Okay. But anyway, I'm just saying like in your (laughs) hero's journey, the all is lost moment was, oh no, the TV isn't working. (laughs) No, it's pretty sad. The stakes are low. So... I, and I, by the way, I am not, everybody has their own philosophy and whatever works for you works for you. But I do think that people You're starting out, <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But what happens is people starting out trying to figure out how to do this, read like 11 different ways and mm. go, I and have to, to do this. All I have to them. do this. Yeah, I have yeah, to yeah. do this. And it's just overwhelming and it fucks everybody up, you know? Um, and it takes time to sort of figure out your own, thing i'm sure i've talked about this before but i always think about it in terms of bruce lee and uh jeet jeet kune do which was his his version of martial arts was he studied everything else and then he was like this is the stuff that works for uh, me like and i'm gonna use this, this. And he chose yeah, the, yeah yeah and i think uh but you do have to study them all to get there well no you could just do your own thing <laughs> your own <laughs> metaphor is not uh, holding up my but, I, but i guess what i'm saying no, no no it does hold up because what i'm saying is you can't go into a taekwondo class and and stop everything and go and say like you're but not instructor doing, this is yeah. not jujitsu because yes. it's not jujitsu yeah and your you and know? the instructor would be like that is correct yeah, yeah. you fucking idiot uh <laughs> so but I, but i think it, it it it's a little bit different in that it does because it's so cerebral as opposed to obviously martial arts is fairly physical. I mean, you know, it is cerebral too. There's, 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 there's a brain aspect, uh, but because all of this is just concepts mm-hmm. that you're imposing on stuff that has already been written, it, right. it just fucks people up and they're like, but this is the this and that's the that. And what about this thing? That's not, yeah. I don't see it, you know? Yeah. That is always sort of like that messes with my head. I don't know if um, like <clears throat> studying theater, mm-hmm. you always, at, at least every class that I took, um, analyze the characters and the relationships and the plot through a lens of a post Freudian psychology. Mm -hmm. And um, where I started being like, Whoa, is when I realized that a lot of those works were written before people thought of things that way. Right. So it's like, are we injecting this philosophy into it or does the philosophy universally work? Like you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I do. First, and if something isn't there, does that mean that the person didn't put it in, or does it mean that the philosophy doesn't work, or yes. does it mean yeah, that yeah, you're yeah. just not seeing it, or, or is are, it you are know we adding it and that was yeah. not the author's intention? Right. Um, 
We'll come back to that in the parting shots. Oh, wow. Because it ties into something I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, Freudian. I'm just making a note. So I remember Freudian psychology, (laughs) Jeet Kune Do, Bruce Lee, tying it all together. (laughs) No. Wow. I can't wait to see this big finish. (laughs) It's just going to be like a list of things. So these things all were things I wrote down today. That's my parting shot. Uh, so what else? Anything else for your um, for your checking in? Are you fucking with Wordle? <laughs> I am not. I am not <laughs> at all. You me up your alley. I I'm sure that's true, but I also am irritated by the fact that everybody feels like they have to share all the time. You know, it's like Twitter is now full of Wordle. Facebook is now full of Wordle. So. I, I go against the grain. I go against the grain. Well, I wordle and I don't share. That's good. I like but that. I, I tried to get Jeff on board and mm-hmm. it didn't work. He's like, what are the rules? I told him like four times. And I was mm-hmm. like, here, do it. You, you figure it out. And then right. he's like, just tell me what the word is for today. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure I'll try it at some <clears throat> point And I may. It's fun. It's, it's on one it. puzzle a day. Like you can't play more than one. Right. But the fact that everyone is imposing on me their diagram, their score, their unusual method of scoring, their trademarked name. I'm like, I don't care. I do not care. I'm not impressed. I'm not interested. I just don't care, you know? Right. Um, But that's the nature of social media at this point is you are supposed to take things that other people will not care about and make sure that they see them. That's the whole point, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm professionally in social media. And yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I um it is ironic. I was thinking about it today. Ever since I started working in social media, I'm on social media a lot less. Like I I'm I'm technically on it more, but I'm just looking at the business pages that right. I or you know working you're not just mindlessly scrolling no, through twitter I don't have, or facebook I don't have time. Or, yeah well, you're not on facebook anyway but or rarely anyway i'm back because i had to for my job i saw that but, and i was yeah. like uh-oh what's happening because <laughs> i needed ugh, facebook's the worst company but you have to have a personal login even to log in th- to a business account mm-hmm. so it was easier just to reactivate the one that i had this is also going to tie into uh, <laughs> parting <can't> shots. <laughs> no, no, no. That's actually not true. It's going to par- tie into my checking in. Okay. Let's go for it. What's your checking in? Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not sure where to start, but a few weeks ago, or I don't remember how long ago, but you texted me that thing of whatever it was about getting overwhelmed by the news or social media or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I just truly went the whole time. So to let um, the audience in, I, I, not to brag, but I meditate every day. Um, uh-huh. for 10 minutes. Oh, right. That's what it was. It was it, a it's not, thing. it's not even a, a long time, but I, I meditate for every minute for 10 minutes, at least every day with the calm app. Mm-hmm. Um, not sponsored. Is it, cal- is it cal- calm or Callum? It looks like Callum <laughs> to me. I mean, it might be a regional thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and there's a lot of different options on there, but there's just like a daily automatic 10 minute one that's different every day. That's mm-hmm. what I opt for because I don't want to spend time scrolling, looking for a meditation. It kind of defeats the right purpose. So I just do like the one that they offer up every day and it's different. How can they- I not focus when I'm trying so hard to focus? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, there's like a different theme to mm-hmm. each meditation. And so this one was all about your relationship to media. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was talking about um, not getting swept up in it, like staying informed. And, and if I think, and they, they send you a quote after if you want it. And I was like, I'll save this one. Cause I want to send it to Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it, I, 
I guess I could just read it, but it was like something about that. Like if media is a river, dip your toe so that you don't get swept away or yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Um, yeah. So that's right. because truly while that meditation was happening, I kept thinking about you. Mm-hmm. Um, just. That sounds I mean, like I, a horrible meditation. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could think of a lot of people, but uh-huh. we specifically talk about. Right, right, right like the news and our relationship to it and how angry it makes you. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was like, it it just felt like very present. Yes. You were like the example of what they were talking about in my head. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the key, that's one of the key things when you're, when you're meditating, one of the key things is to realize that the, the guided meditation, they're talking about someone else. They're not. (laughs) Oh, this ain't, this ain't about me. (laughs) I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) I so I sent you it just saying like thought of you or something because truly like there is no way it's weird to spend 10 minutes meditating thinking about a human being and not telling them (laughs) (laughs) uh right so but and and you're not wrong obviously of course that's true but I also also easier said than done like but, but, but yes absolutely but I also coincidentally and I keep meaning to find it and bring it to the table here because I am at a table right now whenever we do this just so just to let the audience in Context. I am at a table right now my dining room table but Dragging, I keep but fine <laughs> I mean sure <laughs> I wish that we had the cool background that you talked about in last episode but sure fine right I should figure out how to do that I'm just concerned that the signal it's cuts out cool. here sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's too, it'll be too impressive to people. Uh, but I read an article in The Guardian and... Bragging again. The, <laughs> yes, I read. I know how to read. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, I, and the article was basically about how distracted everybody is by social media, which I feel, and I recognize that in myself, but the purpose or the, the thesis of the article was, I am not just distracted. My attention is purposefully being stolen. Right. So there's such a thing, and we've talked about this ad infinitum, especially when Jamie is here about how hapless we all are and getting caught up in Twitter and Facebook and memes and this and that. And it's like, no, 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 hold on. Yeah. You have some responsibility, but there are billion dollar companies designing an engine to grab your attention all the time. And they're good at it and they spend a lot on it and they're scientists and they know what they're doing. Right. Right. And uh, anyway, it was an interesting article, but. And it's a little bit like, You've talked about magic a lot on the show, and it's mm-hmm. like, look over here so you don't see what I'm doing over right. there. Right, because it's a commercial enterprise, and your attention is worth money to them for advertising purposes, and because we all know, and you know better than I do, and we're going to find out more and more about this as time goes on, how specifically every person's choices on social media get broken down and they can, you know, the algorithm can predict things about you and whatever. I don't know. Have you seen Don't Look Up yet? Mm-hmm. The thing about him predicting how everybody was going to die was so funny to me. Like, we have this algorithm now that can predict. Right. We don't know what it means, but this is how you're going to die. And then right. obviously there's a payoff for the whole thing, which to right. me was such great evidence of Adam McKay being an improviser because that felt like such a such a like great end of a hero moment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but uh, one of the things that happens is for me, and I'm very aware of this is that I am having been a, I don't know what else to call it, but a fucking nerd, like somebody who read constantly my entire life, a book a day at times, you know, right, I mean, right. I can remember, I've said this before where I, where I, where I went to a house at the beach in between my, my, maybe my second and third years of teaching junior high school. And because I was on a a payroll back then where you got paid for 12 months and you worked for 10 months, I got paid for the whole summer. So I just lived at the house that my friends and I rented for the summer and went to the beach every day and literally read a book every day, a new book every day, like just sat for 10 hours a day reading a book. And now I don't read books anymore. I know. I just don't. 
because I'm too busy being having my attention stolen right. by a million things. <laughs> but I'm kind of in a place right now where I'm like, okay, 2022 is going to be the year of the worm. Which worm? The book worm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to do some rewrites on this catchphrase, but I like the idea. It, it, it means it's a little long. Right, right. There shouldn't be a question in the middle about no, what, what worm, like, and like how many characters are in this. <laughs> so the other day, a couple of days ago, there's all kinds of ethical problems here too, which you know we've discussed before, but. I was on social media and I saw that they had just released that, that a book had just been released that day called blood in the garden and blood in the garden. The subtitle is the flagrant history of the 1990s, New York Knicks. So blood in the garden, Madison square garden, very physical team. They were, they were known for being too physical. A lot of people blamed them for ruining basketball because they were so physical. The game, the rules of the game were changed because of the way the Knicks played. I, that was right at a time in my life when I first became obsessed with basketball. And I loved this team so deeply. Like I can't even, there's no way to communicate how much a part of my life that was not even like a sports fan thing. It was like, cause I was teaching junior high school I was doing comedy several nights a week, rehearsing several nights a week. I was going to graduate school at, uh, you know, Columbia and, and City College, like going to all kinds of programs. I was running an after school program and I was still coming home at one o'clock in the morning and watching the rewind of the game that night till three. So I could get up at six and go like I was just so into this team. I right. loved them. Right so much. So I saw this book had come out and I was like, Oh fuck, I got to get that. So I went on and this is where it gets unethical. I went on Amazon and I ordered it from you're Amazon. You're fine. You're fine. We're all and, fine. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. This is going to come in a few days, whatever. This is at seven o'clock at night. And then I was like, okay. And I, and I, this is not to brag, but then I was like, okay, I'm going to work out. So I went and I worked out in the gym which is in my, in my apartment. And then I went for a walk around the neighborhood and which is not in your apartment. <laughs> well, <laughs> your apartment isn't it. <laughs> no, but that makes me think of well, whatever. Uh, no, the, my neighborhood is not in my apartment. I, all apartments are in neighborhoods. Not all neighborhoods are in apartments. Uh, so I get back to my apartment. It's like nine o'clock. The book is there. Yeah, that fucking book is there. And I was like, wait a minute, that's not possible. How is that possible? Yeah. It's it's seven o'clock at night that I yeah. order the thing. Now it's nine o'clock. Like, no, 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 that can't be. I guess Amazon right. has gotten so out of control. Then I get back and I go on the computer and I see an email that says, your order has shipped. So it has shipped. It has, and they always send me another one saying it has been delivered. Right. So then I started going, oh, right. Six months ago, I saw that this book was scheduled to come out and I pre-ordered it. Amazing. And it came today, right after I ordered it. Yeah. And so I thought it was, so now I'm going to have to have two copies of well, this book. Well, you could give it as a gift. I canceled it. Uh, but... So that was part of it. And then I was like, oh, I hope this book is, you know, I want to, am I going to want to read this? Or is this the kind of thing where I'm going to pick it up and I'll be like, okay, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Which is so many books I have in my so, apartment so right many. now. I have started so many books to your point. I just don't have the attention span. No, or, I, yeah, or, that's exactly it. Or, um, yeah, if I'm sitting on the couch, I'm like, watching TV or looking at my phone. And I'm not proud of that. No, I me don't neither. like it, but that's yeah. the fact. Or I'm actually being quiet and like meditating, but still with my phone, I guess. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and, and sending me the, the thing you get at the end. Uh, so, so I was like, okay, let me sit down and see if this was worth ordering twice and canceling once. Cause you know, they always say order twice, cancel once. Right. And, uh, by the way, I completely was like, oh yeah, Amazon got it to you in two hours. Like it's <laughs> no, sleep labor. Who cares? Like I, I know like, there, I know, 
I know they're fast, but I feel like that's just too, I, like that's I still just not possible. I believed it immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did too at some level, but I still was like skeptical. And then the email confirmed my skepticism. But just to back up for a second, so this team, you know, for for a decade was good but not great, but so close several times. I mean, they made it to the finals twice during that time, and they were in the playoffs every year during the decade of the 90s. And since then, it's been two decades of just they're, – they're literally, by record, they are the worst team in the NBA over the last 20 years. Like, they have lost more games. They've made the playoffs less times than anybody else. They've just been terrible. So it's very hard to be a Knicks fan nowadays, and that's the nature of sports fandom, whatever. But this team was was – for me, very special. And on the team, <laughs> there was a player named Anthony Mason, and he was always my favorite. In fact, he was the only Knicks player from that era that I bought a jersey for. Like, I bought his grown man, and I was like, let me get an Anthony Mason jersey. People do. And, you know, still had it with me when I moved to L.A. and gave it to a girl I was dating who liked basketball and, of course, never saw it again and never saw her again. Not not connected, but you know, like not she, not connected. <laughs> <laughs> right. He gave me a fucking jersey. Like, no, it was not out of nowhere. It was like we had this whole conversation about it, and it was like a cute little thing. But then it was like it was her jersey after that. So when we didn't see each other anymore, that was the end of my Anthony Mason jersey. But he was, you know, he was my favorite Nick. And whatever. What did you like, like about him? Well, I liked that he was a very unusual type of player. He was gigantic and scary in a way. I mean, obviously <laughs> basketball players are big, but he was also, he looked like a football player. Like mm -hmm. he was huge and he played, uh, he basically played power forward, which is where you put the guy who's not tall enough to be the center, but not good enough with the basketball to be a guard and doesn't know how to shoot that well. But the thing about Mason, I think this is what really made a difference for me, was that he he was good with the like he could dribble the basketball. He was six foot eight, 260 pounds, but he had a handle and could dribble. And guys that big don't usually aren't usually able to do that because it, for among other reasons, there's so much more room mm -hmm. for the basketball to go when they're dribbling the basketball. Uh, and so later on in the 90s, when Don Nelson became the coach, they started using him as a point forward. Usually it's a point guard who brings the ball up the court, but people were pressing on the Knicks. And so they started using him to bring the ball. It just was a different style of play. And he was also just like, he was a fucking junkyard dog. Like he was going after people on a regular basis. So anyway, <laughs> all of that is by way of saying let me back up again and say that just this past week, I was talking in my writing classes, as I always do. About stop using the hero's journey. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is like Bruce Lee said. Uh, no, there's there's a week where I always talk about your first scene in the script, and that's your hook. And it's like, of course, that's just logic with any written thing is like you want to grab people sure. in that first scene, and then they're going to be on board. So I was talking about how important that first scene is. And so I start reading Blood in the Garden. And the first scene takes place at the first practice of the 1991 season, which was right when I started watching the Knicks, was right around that time. And Pat Riley is the brand new coach. And, you know, I don't know if you remember, but Pat Riley was like, you know, the the yeah. Armani suits and the slick back hair and yeah. like, yeah, he was the nineties. Right. He was totally the nineties. <laughs> and uh, so this was his first practice and he's having them do this drill where the coaches shoot from outside and like six forwards start under the basket and try, it's just a rebounding drill. Like they're supposed to box each other out and try to get the rebounds. And Mason this is this is his first time playing with the Knicks, and he's never played in the NBA before. He's played professionally in Turkey and like other places in Europe, but never played in the NBA. So this is his shot, you know. Right. And so he's in there going for rebounds, and there's a, another player named Xavier McDaniel. That is a fake name. <laughs> no, the X Man, and 
he, he looks like the X-Men. I mean, he has, you know, shaved head, like huge, scary, and a veteran, like has played in the NBA for six or seven years at that point. And he does a thing that's a total veteran move without getting into the details, but he's like, instead of just boxing guys out, he's hooking their legs with his legs and tripping people so that he can get the rebound. And Mason turn, he does it to Mason once Mason's like, what the fuck does it again? And Mason just turns and looks at him and goes, do that again. And I'm going to fuck you up. And first day of practice. And the next time somebody shoots it, McDaniel hooks another guy not even mason and mason just punches him in the face and they start going out in practice and i was like yes i am on board sure, you hooked this me. Book. i can't believe they didn't like fire i'm just thinking of i know that basketball teams aren't corporate america but like how like right. well but i mean small. that's the thing like, is like, like what you're, are we abso- talking? you're absolutely right it's like these are grown men worth millions of dollars fist fighting in a gym <laughs> on the first day of practice it isn't even like resentment has grown over time but in terms of the people in charge looking at them they're like great they're they're aggressive i don't they're know hungry. but i think there is an element of like you have to let what makes these guys great is their aggressiveness and you have yeah. to let them be so then i keep reading and i just want to read this one sec because this is like I already know all about the Knicks from the nineties, whatever, whatever. But the thing about these books is you find out stuff you didn't know. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. And this is like, so now they're talking about Mason, but they're also talking about McDaniel, who I also loved as a player, although he was only there for the first few years. Uh, But anyway, so there's these two giant guys fighting and people are pulling them apart. I mean, the whole thing opens with Riley drenched in sweat and it's like, how could this, icon of the 90s who always was perfect hair and perfect clothing be drenched in sweat and it's because he's trying to pull these two giant guys apart well and he's probably so much smaller than them yeah i mean he played he played pro ball too so he was still a big guy but not nearly the same size as them but anyway the next i I just i'm just going to read this because it's so fucking insane and and you know you think the fist fighting stuff is crazy this is this is the next paragraph about about uh, McDaniel. It says, "Let's see." Uh, McDaniel was no more willing to back down than Mason. McDaniel prioritized manhood, specifically his own manhood, according to McDaniel's teammates in Seattle. He often walked around the Sonics locker room fully erect after games, hanging towels on his hardened member. Also, he fought people and he fought them constantly. <laughs> like, what the fuck? That's insane. This dude is just a professional athlete walking around the locker room with towels hanging off his hard dick to, to scare people. It's fucking crazy. Uh it's so very that, like you said junkyard dog earlier. It feels mm-hmm. very like primal, like I'm the alpha. Right. That's exactly right. It's like I'm gonna show everybody, literally, I'm gonna show everybody how big my dick is, you know? Uh, and I'm gonna scare everybody, and they're gonna be, and that's to his own teammates. That's his <laughs> own locker room. Know. You know? That's crazy. Uh so so. Yeah, I mean, it is like they're working in corporate America in a sense because they're all owned by corporations, but there's also this element that is, like you said, so primal and so like, I am bigger than you, I am stronger than you, and I will fuck you up. And so Mason's in this practice, like I was trying to think through this last night, and I'm like, so Mason is in this practice what other recourse does he have? Like, hey, man, come on, knock it off. That's not cool. Yeah, let, let's grab coffee after this. Yeah. yeah. Hey, coach, can you tell him to stop doing this with his like? It was like the has, only option he had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing else. There's nothing. Nothing else you can do. Um, except, except punch somebody in the face who's known for walking around locker rooms naked with his dick hard hanging towels off the end of it um 
So we'll see. I mean, the thing is also that I remember so much of this stuff so vividly, so many games I watched that, and they do get into specifics of games and series and stuff. And so I'm just gonna be really fun. I yeah, think, I'm just I think interested to read through it. You're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna get through it. Yeah, I think so. It's the year of the worm. What worm? <laughs> the bookworm. <laughs> I wish I had thought of that before I said it because I would not have said it. Uh, <laughs> but, but you can't go back, you know. You can't just go back and cut things out of this podcast or edit stuff or you know. There's just no way, no way to do that. And I, I, I just wanted to say one other. One other thing that I got, I got this book also. I mean, it's good that it's the year of the worm. What worm? The bookworm. <laughs> uh, I, I've come around. I now love it. <laughs> uh, because I got, <laughs> I got, well, first of all, here is Blood in the Garden, the flagrant history of the New York Knicks. Um, and that is Patrick Ewing, John Starks, Charles Oakley. And that's Mason. This is Mason all the way in the back here my favorite um number 14 wish i still had the jersey i hope you're enjoying it whoever you are wherever you are you um, don't remember her name <laughs> <laughs> i do i really do um the uh the other thing i got in the mail which was very exciting is i got our friend nathan's new book the joy of trash Oh, awesome. Uh, which is Nathan Rabin's Happy Places Definitive Guide to the Very Worst of Everything. So this is a book that he wrote and published himself on Kickstarter with illustrations by the great Felipe Sobrero. Incredible. And uh, and I even got, I mean, I won't, I won't read it, but Nathan wrote a very nice inscription inside. And like, it's just very... Aww. Yeah, I'm excited to what read a, this. He's the best. That's yeah. lovely. So you've got um, a lot of work to do. A lot do of reading worm. to do, yeah. <laughs> um I like calling you worm. <laughs> well, they already talked about the worm in The Blood in the Garden. Any NBA fan knows that the worm is Dennis Rodman, who was an integral part of And, you know, I'll, I'll stop after this, but the 90s was really quite a glorious time for the NBA because – the first year that Riley was coaching the Knicks was also the first year, or maybe it was the year after, I can't remember, but it was right when Jordan started winning championships. So it was like the greatest player in the history of basketball comes along. The Knicks are good, but not great. He's the thing that's in the way of them getting to the finals. They eventually get to the finals the year that he leaves basketball to go play baseball. Like it was just kind of a very cool era for the sport, you know? That's it. I won't say anything more about basketball. Uh, so that is my that is my uh, uh, checking in. Oh, I'll say one one other thing, which is I don't know how many people who listen to this show also listen to Improv for Humans, but I did an episode of Improv for Humans. So that's oh, a fun. podcast. That's an improv 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 podcast. An improvisational podcast that Matt Besser started many, many years ago. Um, and I've done it. <laughs> Somebody actually just, this is super weird because I don't even remember this conversation, but apparently when we did the 500th episode of the show, the subject came up during the episode of who has been on the show the most. And one of the guesses was me, which turned out not to be the case, but a listener went back and charted every appearance oh, wow. by every person and like in incredible detail too. Like I can't even remember like how many minutes they were on during the course of that season. Like it was great. Anyway, I came in sixth, but that's pretty this, good. It's pretty good. Uh, this week I got to do an episode. And so of course, I'm so desperately craving improvising because I haven't done it for two years, except in this situation, uh, except for that one 500th episode where we actually did meet in person. That was the one time I improvised in person this whole time. And then, of course, shit, that was right before Delta. So, so you know, whatever. Um but uh, I did an episode this week, which I have no idea when it'll come out. But if people are, are paying attention, it was just 
Matt Besser and Andy Daly and myself. And it was fun. You know, it was like, that sounds fun. Getting to do a show. Like I always love doing shows with whoever, but these are guys I've worked with. I've worked with each of them individually. They've worked with each other individually. And all three of us have worked together individually. So many individual <laughs> times. <laughs> uh, so it was just really, really fun. Whether or not it's fun for the audience, I can't say. But for me, I was like so happy for the whole rest of the day. Just Aw, that's really lovely. Uh, so that's my that's my checking in. Uh, and, uh, now we do a part of the show that we call taking a break. Should we do that? Yep. What is that like? Well, it's, do you know anything about bones where they just snap in half? That's, (laughs) that's called breaking a bone. So this is where we snap the show in half. (laughs) That's true. And then we knit it back together. And over the course of the next six weeks, it will slowly Mm -hmm. start to, we have to keep it in place. It'll start to heal. Yeah. yeah. Traction is often involved in the second half of the show. <laughs> um, so let's, uh, let's take a break and we will be back with more. Long shot. Parting shots. <laughs> Uh, you are, you are, fuck. I fucked up. Can we start over? <laughs> We're back. No. You're listening to the long shot. No, it is. It is can. a podcast. Uh, and this is a part of the show that we call parting shots. And that's kind of like when, um, like George Clooney and Michelle Pfeiffer are getting divorced in a movie and like they're in the conference room and they're both signing Just a movie. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but I'm sure there was a movie with both of the minute where they got a divorce, right? Wasn't there? I don't know. I, I, I'm I thinking of one fine day and it was the opposite. It was them meeting and falling in love. I'm, I'm you know, what's, this is going to sound totally weird, but I'm also thinking of one fine day, but I watched it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they both were like getting divorced are divorced maybe they are lawyers and they met each other they met in their boardroom because they were the lawyers for other people or something no they both had kids on a field trip who like missed the boat or something and so they had to spend the day together and they hated each other but Mm. then they didn't you that is it. that is the roots of any good rom com. Then they had their all is lost moment. Right, they right, learned right. Taekwondo. The, the other yeah. guy did it. You know he, yeah. Um, so maybe that's a bad analogy, but whatever the case, it's the last part of the show where we talk about different things from the first part of the show. So <laughs> or sometimes the same. Sometimes the same. List. I don't. I, I'm I guess dying we'll see. To hear this. I wish I could read my own handwriting. Uh. No, here's okay. So I'll go first this time. We'll flip it. So oh, like no. last time you went first, then what, I'm what sorry. Happened? I just um I wash my hands so much mm-hmm. between coronavirus and germs, like, smudgies, food, and oh, right. poop. Like so, I just feel like I have old lady hands now, and it is what it is. But mm. I just when I saw it in camera, I was like, whoa. Also, I am the age that I am. I need to accept right. it. Well, and also like <laughs> the way to combat that is just never show your hands on camera. Like that's sure. why I never show my hands on camera. Your because... hands look like baby. You look like you have <laughs> newborn baby hands. You've uh, never done a thing in your life. <laughs> no work for this guy. No work for this guy. Uh, yeah, I have baby hands. Tiny little baby hands. No, like but Trump. they look smooth. Uh, they, they used to be, they're not so much anymore because I've been using kettlebells a lot. So now I have like calluses in the middle here, but I did used to have very smooth hands. I definitely was like, not known for my, you know, like physical labor. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I wasn't, you're a poet. I wasn't outside like, Hey, you guys need a post Doug, a post hole. (laughs) Uh, 
So anyway, uh, oh, before before I get into my parting shot, I just wanted to say this, and I know I know you hate it when I do this, but I the walls are closing in on Donald Trump, right? Like he things are going south for him, and we've been saying that for five years. Yeah, six, that's, why, that's why I'm seven like, years. I, I don't know, yeah, yeah. man. He's wiggly. <laughs> oh, totally wiggly. But the thing that really cracked me up this week was it just came out like last night or something. And it was the thing that somebody then, I guess, Maggie Haberman in the New York Times was like, Trump has decided he's definitely running because if he runs for president, then anything anybody says against him is just a witch hunt and they're trying to keep him out. It's political. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. So so he because this this investigation from the New York attorney general's office has gotten so so much closer and it's now borderline criminal and i mean the guy is a lifelong criminal he's a, like he's a criminal yeah uh i was reading a thing that said that i think it might have also been maggie haberman oh she might have been saying this on cnn she was like he doesn't he doesn't respond to texts people text him but he doesn't respond so there's no proof that he said anything and he constantly uses his aides phones to communicate with other people so like he knows it's like burner phones. Yeah, like he knows like if any if shit goes down it's going to go down on that guy not on me because I said all this bad shit but it was on somebody else's phone so there's no proof that it was me. But it, also, it's like it's such a clear it's such a clear indication of his of guilt. mentality. Yeah. 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 But also like the dichotomy between that and the fact that he would tweet like every thought that came across his. Well, brain. that's where it gets weird too, where th- this has always been a thing where it's like, well, he says it so publicly. He says these things like, I'm going to do this criminal that thing. It almost it takes the wind off because, of it. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it can't be criminal. He's just saying he's going to do it. Why would he say it if he was going to yeah, actually right. do it? But anyway, one of the things that came out was that he was exaggerating. And we already knew this, but the specifics of it were so funny to me that I had to look it up. Uh, can you set it up that I can share my my screen with you? Um, yeah, I, I think that you can just hit. Wait, let me see. Um, can I just hit share screen? Yeah, I think so. No, it says host disabled participant screen. Uh, uh, but anyway, how about now? The the yeah okay oh, so oh, oh. so so one second. Let me see if I can figure out where this fucking thing is. Uh, the uh, the thing that came out was that he was exaggerating the size of his penthouse apartment. Okay. I was like, I'm so scared. Where this is <laughs> right. Right. We've already <laughs> talked about that. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I'm sure that too, but like he, he was exaggerating the size of his penthouse apartment. So when he wanted to get a loan against his penthouse apartment, he was saying that it was 70,000 square feet. That was the size of his apartment. And when he was paying taxes on his apartment, he was saying that his apartment was 10,000 square feet. So he was getting these huge loans and then paying so little. I mean, you're still going to pay a lot of money on a 10,000 square foot penthouse apartment in New York City, but not compared to a 70,000. So who knows how big it really was? But I was like, what if I exaggerated the size of my apartment seven times? So I just Googled what it would look like if my apartment, if I said my apartment yeah. was seven times the size, if I was like, oh yeah, this is how big my apartment is. This is what my apartment would look like. I can't wait. Is it working? Let's see. Aaron is sharing. Oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> like you've been to my apartment yeah. and it's not like that. Uh <laughs> So that would be how much I would be exaggerating the size of my. That's a big difference. <laughs> it's a huge difference. Oh my it god! Just made me laugh so much. Uh, no, it's it's seventy. 000. Did I say seventy thousand? I meant it was actually ten thousand. I meant ten thousand. Uh, so anyway, who knows what's going to happen? But we always have hope. Hope is the thing with feathers. Uh, so my my parting shot was going to be. And I'm not going to do this now, but it just occurred to me that, and this happened the other day on the Improv for Humans podcast, Besser was like, do you guys want to plug anything? <laughs> and in my head, I was like, I'm going to plug my newsletter that I send out every week. And so Daly plugged his thing. And then Besser was like, okay, that's it. Thanks, everybody. And that was the end of the recording. So I didn't get to do it. 
which is fine, whatever, who cares? Uh, I emailed Besser and said like, oh, if you have a second to, if you do any like drops or anything in the middle, yeah. plug this, but not a big deal. But I was like, I never plug it on my own podcast even. And it is a thing that I enjoy doing and like putting out. And some people seem to really like it. Other people have no interest, which is fine. But there might be people who listen to this show who don't know about it because right. you can't expect everybody to know everything about you. You know, um, they know that I'm a huge, passionate fan of the Knicks from the 90s, but maybe they don't know. So what I was going to do was uh, read from the one I wrote this week, but now I'm not going to do that because I already read from this other thing and like too much reading makes the baby go blind. I mean, it is the year of the worm, but uh, sorry, I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> what worm? <laughs> oh, okay. No, but also it feels like you had planned to read from the book and also from. Right. But it didn't occur to me until now oh, that, that like, so enough reading. is enough. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Um, Be present. Right. But, but uh, the, uh, the thing I was going to talk about, I don't even know if it's in here because I think I might've taken it out. Uh, uh, writing down quotes. Yeah, I did. I took it out. So I wrote a thing about, I mean, it, it, it was all based on uh, the fact that this is another social media controversy, but Martin Luther King day happened and everybody was quoting Martin Luther King on, on social media, everybody. And there's this whole thing about the Republicans using this one particular quote over and over and over again in a way that Dr. King maybe didn't intend for it to be used. And it's the quote about judging a man by the content of his character, not the color of his skin. And that's why we shouldn't study critical race theory, because skin color no, doesn't that, matter. That's yeah. not what it means. Right. Uh, so anyway, I just saw so much about all these quotes and I was like, I'm, I don't want to quote Dr. King in this newsletter, but I was like, what are quotes that have stuck with me over the years from people I have known? And I went back and I started thinking about all the teachers I had ever had and what I remembered from each of them. And I wrote about a bunch of them, not a bunch, but five of them. And, uh, anyway, I wrote a whole thing about my English teacher from sophomore year of high school, who was. I mean, there are certain teachers that stand out in your memory. And he was, he was one of them. I had a lot of great teachers in high school, as it turns out, but he was particularly interesting. And the way this relates to what we were talking about before was you were talking about looking at everything through Freudian psychology and does that make sense? Does it not make sense? And whether or not you agree with that, what I think is interesting about that is giving people the language to sort of examine things in a different way and process it in a way that would never have occurred to them had they not been told, hey, here's a way to look at, here's a different lens to look at things through. Right. Here's, here's Freudian psychology. Here's critical race theory. Uh, but Mr. Martin the thing that he did, which again, I did not mention this in the thing I wrote, but it stuck with me all these years because it was the first time that I ever heard somebody talk about a thing in a way that I had not really, that, that sort of made sense. But I was also like, why would you, how would you ever think of that? You know, uh, was he, we read Lord of the Flies. It's a very famous novel about a royalty involved with uh some, some insects <laughs> and, uh, it's the year of the fly which fly lord of the flies uh but his you know his overarching theory of lord of the flies or at least one of them and the one he presented to us to think about it this way sure was Lord of the Flies is not a story about a group of boys who are shipwrecked on an island and have to figure out how to work together as a society until they're rescued by a deus ex machina when the British Navy shows up at the end, which was the first time I had ever heard the term deus ex machina, which in terms of writing is kind of like a pussy way to end things. It's like, really, you got nothing and you're just going to have 
somebody come in at the end and, you know. It like, is the publisher being like, we need a happy ending. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, you can't end with them starving to death because they can't get along. Uh, They're kids. <laughs> right. Uh, so his theory was that's not what the book is. The book is actually one person examining every aspect of their mind. So every character in the book represents a different aspect of this person's mind and they're dealing with reality, which is represented by the Island and the shipwreck and all that stuff. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't, I didn't believe it, but it was just a different way the, the to idea, think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The things might not be exactly representational like right right it, it, and yeah. and I, and i think i think that i mean maybe there was other times i don't remember them before that ever being like oh i get it he's really talking about this other thing and i'm figuring it all out but once you get into that and i mean this is this is also the problem with what's going on in the world right now is that this is a different version of conspiracy theory where it's like no no no. this thing means uh, this this thing means this this other thing doesn't mean what you think it means mm. the reason there's three dots after that that is, is so this. true like um sort of analyzing literature is is its own like niche mm-hmm. version of conspiracy theory i've never thought of it that way but um it's like a safer not harming other people because <laughs> right. it's just like is this make-believe thing about this or is it about this you know and, <laughs> right and it's like <laughs> if it is great and if it isn't it isn't and there's nobody who's going to go you f-, i mean i guess that's probably not true there probably have been wars started because of stuff like that but for the most part the Bible. No- <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right but, but yeah well, now we're getting into like whether, you know, how, how did science develop and what what is religion? And, you know, these are the issues we tackle wow, here on The I Long Shot. I always worry that our show isn't deep enough. But we're, we're... <laughs> I mean, that is really true, though, is like <laughs> when something can't be proven, like God's existence, mm-hmm. then I say it's this and you say it's that. Then the only way to figure out who's right is one of us has to kill the other one. Or you can say you're fine and I'm fine, but people don't, that's not how people work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they want a right answer. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's why eventually the scientific me- method developed and people were like, what are the facts that back this up? And that lasted for, I don't know, 200 years. And now we're back to, we're dead. That's no, 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 this is what I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. COVID is not real. Don't give me the bullshit about people dying. Even if there's facts. Yeah, Mm-mm. doesn't la 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 name, yeah. lamestream media. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, it took thousands of years to develop science, and now in like seven years, it's gone. Um, not for everybody, but anyway, uh, I wrote about Mr. Martin, I wrote about a couple of other people. I send this thing out every week. I would love it for people to subscribe to it, and it's easy to subscribe to, and it's very easy to unsubscribe if you are not interested. <laughs> Uh, you can go to my website, seanconroy.com and go to the page that says, God, I should have looked it up. I don't know what the page is called newsletter or letter or life letter or something like that. Life letter. It's called the Sean Conroy life letter (laughs) for Uh, worms. (laughs) Yes. The life letter for worms. Uh, so that's the thing I send out every week and it's always about something. Sometimes it's interesting. Sometimes it's not interesting, but you know, different things appeal to different people. It's it's always interesting to me because I have an email that people can respond to. And it's always interesting the responses I get week to week. Like who who is what resonates with which person, you know? Are people like none of this happened. It's all just in someone's <laughs> mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't exist. You're a figment. <laughs> you represent right. Yeah. Um no, it's it's uh So anyway, I just wanted to plug that because I feel like it's a thing I do and I'm proud of it. And I would like for people, for more people to get it, you know, to, 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 I want more people to pay attention to me basically is what I'm saying. Sure. Um, so anyway, that's my, that's my parting shot. Uh, I wrote down a couple of other things that we're supposed to circle back to. You have to like karate or 
I don't think so because I can't read what it says here. <laughs> my, my handwriting is not good. I wrote down, I could see it says Freudian. Mm-hmm. Which you did circle back to. Mm-hmm. Psychology. I, I feel like synonym at this point. <laughs> right. We didn't need both written down. Oh no, it does, it does say synonym <laughs> here. Um, <laughs> but I feel like we did that too. Uh, Amber, parting shots. Yeah. So today is dear Smudgy's first birthday. He is one year old. Happy and um, I know that I am, I know that I am projecting it on him, but like, he was so good today on all our walks. And I was like, you're a grown up now. What a good one year old. You did it. And, mm-hmm. um, I'm, st- this relates. I'm, I'm not done with that, but, um, okay. I'm still doing my morning pages. I'm, I, uh, Great. I have like multiple <laughs> notebooks now and wow. I'm, I, I am very proud of myself because this is the longest streak I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I was writing today, I like, how, <laughs> how do people have kids? Because I was just like thinking about when we got smudgy and how little he was and how he would like, like, be scared of things like he's still scared of things but like he'd be mm-hmm. scared of things in a way that he would like snuggle in my chest like he was just such a cute little snuggle bunny baby mm-hmm. and he's not like that anymore now like he's he's like I'm a man like don't he doesn't want to be picked up because he could go on a leash now because he learned how it, it took a lot of money and time and effort and pain and tears but um so he's he doesn't want to get picked up anymore so he doesn't get picked up anymore right. um I guess my point is he hasn't even changed that much. Yeah. And it's well, like. He's only one. I mean, just <laughs> wait until he starts telling you to go fuck yourself and locking you out of the house. Then you're going to be like. I think we might be there. <laughs> right. But, um, but just like. Yeah. I, I, um, it's so little, it's just pets. And I, I know there's so many parents listening to this right now, probably rolling their eyes at me but like sort of the the constant heartbreak of of like this person was like a tiny baby that needed you for everything and every day they are so different and they don't even remember that time. I don't know there's something very intense is this the little dog I carry <laughs> <laughs> Also, I still follow his brother's owner. Instagram, yeah. On Instagram, so I just checked it on the break. And that's why I was a little bit late because I had to show Jeff all. I was I like, know. I was like, what the fuck? Where is like, Amber? Look what they're doing for his birthday. He's wearing a bib that says birthday boy. Smudgy mm. would never let us put a bib on him that said birthday boy. Yeah. But, um, I bet he'd let you put a bib on him that said, go fuck yourself and then lock, <laughs> and then lock probably, you out of the house. He probably would. Um, but yeah, I, I like him. He's a good guy. And uh, I feel like he's teaching me a lot. But the more I think about it, and, and I can't tell if this is me injecting meaning into it because I have to so that um, – it's a livable situation or if there is actual meaning or mm-hmm. a combination. This but sounds like Freudian psychology. I know. Circle back. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's our Herald. Um, <laughs> but he is sort of this heightened version of my shadows and the things I need to work on mm-hmm. where um, like, I, I think that I have, like a, a a component of my personality where fear stops me from a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I would say that is the same for him. But conversely, like he has very clear boundaries. Sometimes they're not correct and we need to shift them. But he's very clear of like, this is what I like and this is what I don't like. Mm-hmm. And I respect that. I want to be more like that. Yeah. Honestly. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, happy birthday, Smudgy. 
a long-winded way of saying that. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, before you know it, he'll be married, moving into a house of his own. I know. We, we, we keep joking, like, when are you going to get a job? <laughs> Sunrise, sunset. We, we actually had a whole um, sort of imaginary scenario where he did move into an apartment, but he was ordering so much Postmates because he doesn't know how to do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that he also would just be like, Mom, can I come over? I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> uh cool well folks that is our show it's the let me write this down so i don't forget and hopefully i'll be able to read this handwriting later which frequently is a problem uh, oh wait is, wait yeah. i have one more thing to say um i was exhausted after work and i had five minutes before this podcast and let I let me like, guess where this is going you what? did cocaine <laughs> no i've never done cocaine okay. um but i was like i know what i'll do i'll put on a little makeup and not just that i will try an eyeshadow technique that i saw once on tiktok mm. three weeks ago that i've never tried before and so as i was doing i was like why am i doing this mm -hmm. but um it's okay i'm not mad at it yeah. anyway uh TikTok, it could have been a disaster there's a lot of stuff to get out of tiktok you know oh yeah acting lessons um <laughs> workout Financial videos tips. yeah uh folks this has been the long shot it is a podcast this has been the smudgy's first birthday episode sorry <laughs> and yeah sorry sorry uh We'll see you next time on The Long Shot. Bye. So where does the time go, Marissa? And whatever took us so long? And which of us settled the science that proved all my theories so wrong? I don't suppose that was you. 